it's looking like this trip could possibly be over to be honest what the hell is that sound i can't tell if it's the bell the bell looks like it's still spinning or if it's like one of these bully things i don't know i better turn it off and... now what if you're new here i'm liam from good block outdoors and the time has finally come to visit scotland and more importantly, get away from the city life and spend some time in solitude alone in the stunning mountainous Scottish Highlands. Before leaving, I had to do a few bits to my recently purchased 4x4 Volvo XC90 to get it ready for the 700 mile round trip. So it's my only day off this week, so I thought I'd take advantage of that and do some work on the Volvo XC90 for the Scotland trip. So I'm going to replace the rear discs and pads and the front pads and the rear handbrake shoes as well. Now I've not done this before, so handbrake shoes could be a bit tricky. I've done brakes and that on a car before. I'm not just winging it on this. Well, I am, but you know what I mean. I've got a little bit of experience. The thing is though, with this Volvo, it's had nothing but either Volvo dealership or Volvo specialist garages working on it. And now within a couple of weeks of me owning it, it's got my dirty mitts messing it all up. But it's thinking, what the f are you doing to me? Anyway, got to get it done. Of course it had to be raining, didn't it, today? Right, people, so it's actually a new day. Please forgive me with the noise. They would decide to start digging half at the road up today, wouldn't they? So the other day, I started doing the backs. The back pads are done, the back discs are done, the back handbrake shoes are done. I had a bit of an issue with those handbrake shoes. I've never done them before. So luckily, my mate is a mechanic and lives over at the road. So he was coming home and he seen me with car jacked up and that. So he came over to have a nosy and bailed me out. And then I got around to doing the front pads. They'd only gone and sent me the wrong bloody parts. And I've double checked, I definitely ordered the right parts. They sent me the front pads for an XC60, not an XC90. So same again, my mate bailed me out. He got some ordered to his garage on the same day. Now this is the following day. So I'm gonna tackle the front pads today, get them all boxed off, and then we're good to go. Right, that's off. Just to compare. That's your old pad. That's your new pad. A look at the difference. There we are. All done buzzing. My next little mission would be to head down to Wicks to look for some ply board to put in the back of the car. Thank you very much. Mainly just to fill the gaps for when I put the seats down. As you can see, didn't actually fit in the car in one piece, so we had to cut it. No bother though. Yes, people, this is it. This is the big one. Scotland. It's Monday morning, 300 miles to go. We've got a six hour journey. The tank is full of diesel. The back's full of gear. We've got a week off. Happy days, this is what it's all about. I'm finally buzzing to get on a nice long trip. The weather is beautiful. about to go on to M6 now, just waiting for Jeremy Clarkson to pull out. 231 miles to go. This is us. Boom, M6. Right. Now it's a case of cruise control. Literally kick back, relax now. We've not got another instruction on the sat now for 
147 miles. So just on the M6 now, I'll go all the way up past Lake District. We come through like Funky Friday and have all your man them skating. Sick. Right, I just found somewhere to have a little break. And by somewhere, I mean somewhere pretty epic. I'm just on a little lay-by road at the side of Loch Lomond. So pleasantly surprised to find plenty of parking spaces. So that's decent. I'd love to do a beach camp on here. Imagine that on there. That would be epic. But well, obviously I've got plans for tonight already, so I might come back here in a few days time. Because it really does look pretty decent. I know it's not a beach, because it's a lock, but it is a beach, isn't it? Pebble beaches, mate. So I just want to give a massive shout out to All Powers for powering this trip for me by sending me the All Powers R600 power station. So I'm just currently recharging my GoPro, whatever I've used so far. And not only did they send me the power station, they also sent me this beast. So we've got free energy. So while we're out here enjoying the sun, we're making most of it. As you can see, that is like the most basic stripped down car camping you could ever imagine. Not that I'm actually car camping, but it's just a good place to chill when I need to. So I've got the foil window covers. I've wrapped in fabric on the outside, so they're just like tinted windows. And I've just got some literally plastic storage tubs and just this board fill the gap between the seats and then I just chuck my old UL80 Trekology air mat on that and it's just a good backup so if I need to kip and then back there is a curtain so what I'm going to do now is get changed get all my camping gear ready for tonight's camp I'm going to head up to Glencoe and it's looking like I think tonight we're going to park at the Free Sisters car park and maybe go check out the Lost Valley, or the Hidden Valley. It's looking like this trip could possibly be over, to be honest. What the hell is that sound? I can't tell if it's the bell. The bell looks like it's still spinning, or if it's like one of these bully things. I don't know, I better turn it off. And... Now what?
Right, people. Quite the change of plan. So this is part of my alternator belt, which has snapped. So you might have seen me wrap up that video where I were outside the Kulag, Kul I don't know what it is, some beach near Loch Lomond anyway. Well, I'm still here. So I got changed into my hiking gear, ready to set off up, had a break for like an hour or something here. And then I started the car up, snap. Part of the alternator belt just snapped. What can I do? So my options were to get the RAC down, they can tow me to a garage or take me home, I guess. I've got that covered, but it's like four and a half miles home. Four and a half miles. But it's like four and a half hours just for me to get home, so I'm not doing that. So what I've done is just gone on Facebook and Google, I've just been looking around mobile mechanics. So I've found a geezer that's gonna come up tomorrow. He did say not until afternoon, so I guess I'm stuck here. So he's gonna replace the alternator belt. And then I guess we just take it from there. Hopefully that's all it is. He fixes it and then we'll carry on the plans as we were. Just delay them by a day. Luckily I'm here all week, so <laughs> is what it is. What can you do? No point mourning and groaning about it. Just enjoy the view instead. And I guess this will be my first night car camping. I could do a little beach camp down there. I've not decided yet. I've just been chilling out for a bit. Cause, yeah. Blagged me a bit, did that when it happened, but I feel a bit better now knowing someone's coming tomorrow. Hopefully they do come. I'm sure they will. So yeah, that's where we're at. I want buzzing as well, man. Proper buzzing. I'm just so lucky that I stopped here. Because I'm in a great location where I can camp here for night. I was so close to stopping off at services as well, only a few miles down the road. I'd have been gutted if I'd have broke down there. Come away from the car for a little bit. So I just come for a little walk, really. A little wonder. Oh man, not gone to plan this so far. What? What can we do? It's one of them, isn't it? Right, do you know what? Do you know it's going to be a game changer for me? Let's just get my tent and camp out out here. A few moments later. Obviously, I was umming and ahhing about doing a wild camp. I was just chilling in car thinking that's it for night, but nah. I've decided I'm going to do what I do best and get out amongst these cracking views. So we've not got much time really tonight. So I'm gonna get tent whacked up and crack on. Need to find somewhere to pitch first though.
So the tent tonight is the nightcap two-person tent, which is really decent. I've not slept out in it yet, but my sister and her fellow Lewis, they stayed out in it when we kept at Snowdon. Now it's the only tent that I've brought on this trip that's sort of suitable for this ground because it's freestanding but you still need to peg the doors out to be able to make the vestibule. So as you can see there now, I'm having a bit of trouble. Because the pegs are quite small, you know, to save weight, it's quite hard to dig it in these pebbles. So I've had to use some big ass rocks and just put them on. And then hopefully we're all right. The perks of camping pretty close to the car. <laughs> so I forgot my foil mat. And there's no way I'm putting my firm rest down on them pebbles. No chance. Where's the tent? Where's the tent? There it is, the beast. morning people it's the following day now i know yesterday ended a bit abrupt video wise but after what happened with car i just wasn't feeling it so i was sat in car for like i don't know seven hours or something and i don't know i couldn't be asked anymore so i just grabbed my tent meandered on down the beach i think i filmed a little bit yesterday i'm not sure what i got and then i just had something to eat and just went to sleep so it's like 9 a.m now i'm in no rush been up since about quarter to seven but this mobile mechanic is supposed to be coming today it's said afternoon so i'm stuck here for the rest of the morning and dinner time and all that stuff luckily i've packed plenty of food got shit loads of water over there i've just got to make the best of it so fingers crossed today it's just the alternator belt needs changing and then we can crack on any more issues then yeah i don't know what to do it's looking like an rac take me home jobby but it's not going to come to that so, all packed up from last night's camp. I guess we just head back to the car now and wait. Keep us fingers and toes crossed. A few hours later. Well, people, I don't know how long it's going to last, but we're back on the road. Shout out to that guy who came. Cunningham, mobile mechanic. I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> but anyway, he's changed the belt. We're back running. So I guess we just take it from here. I still feel a bit nervous and I don't know why. kids in the middle of the road on bikes then. So we're about 28 hours behind schedule with 57 miles to go, one hour 15 minutes. So if you want to see me do a wild camp, I know I did one last night but it wasn't really planned, but tonight I'm heading over to the Free Sisters car park and we're going to do a camp in the Hidden Valley or the Lost Valley. So make sure you've subscribed to check that one out. Drop a like on this video as well and a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out in a bit.